happy October and welcome to this episode of QTV. I'm Hannah Youngquist. And I'm Jeremy Culver. Many people thought that mumps was a virus of the past, but Quincy University has one suspected case on campus. QU has partnered with the Outland County Health Department to help reduce the spread of mumps, and we have some tips for you. The symptoms you should know include fever, headache, muscle ache, and the swelling of the face. Infection occurs through direct coughing, sneezing, or contact with any surface that has been contaminated with the mumps virus. Students should not go to the Wellness Center if they think they have the mumps, but contact the Director of the Wellness Center at 217-220-3954. The Health Department and QU are offering vaccination to reduce contracting mumps. Mumps is a virus and cannot be treated with antibiotics, so it is essential that you limit your contact with others. If you are unsure if you have received the mumps vaccination, please contact the Office of Student Affairs to verify your status. The St. Baldrick's Foundation is a second leading organization in funding ch childhood research grants in the U.S. And this month, folks on QU's campus have a chance to help during a fun event. This week, I sat down with a volunteer who is giving more than just her time to this cause in this week's Campus Newsmaker. I am here today with Dr. Fagan. She, along with Natasha Ramsey, is hosting a St. Baldrick's event this month. Dr. Fagan, what is St. Baldrick's and what are you raising money for? St. Baldrick's is a volunteer-driven charity that funds the most research grants for childhood cancer cures other than the U.S. government. So we're raising money in the form of donations to shave our heads in order to raise money for St. Baldrick's. Um, the idea of shaving your head is that many children lose their hair while they're fighting can cancer. And so the idea is that we'll be standing in solidarity with those kids. So you will be shaving your head? Yes. <laughs> so you along with who else? Um, Natasha Ramsey is the other uh, female staff member who's doing it. Jonathan Miles um, is a professor of philosophy who's doing it. And then there are um, several female shavies who are students and one male student who's a shavy. There are nine of us total who are shaving our heads. And if students want to shave their heads, can they still? Yes, we are still looking for participants. Anybody who can help us raise money, you can either donate or shave your head. And in addition to St. Baldrick's, actually, it's a combination event. Um, we're having a Pantene Beautiful Lengths donation for anyone who is willing to donate eight inches of their hair for wigs for women. Um, who are fighting cancer as well. So the first part of the event will be women who want to donate, or men if they have hair that long, to donate eight inches of their hair. And then that will be followed by the head shaving event that we're raising donations for. And what inspired you to bring this to um, you? Well, I had been planning on donating my ponytail when it got long enough for quite a while. But earlier in September, I started thinking, hmm, how far am I willing to go with this? And I'd heard about St. Baldrick's a couple years ago. A former colleague of mine had sent a request for a donation, and that's when I first heard about it because she was shaving her head. Um, and so I started thinking in the beginning of, of September, would I be willing to do this? And it just so happened that on September 1st of this year, President Obama issued a proclamation declaring September National Childhood Car Cancer Awareness Month. And I started thinking, hmm, I just so happened to get this idea and he just issued a proclamation, I think I'm going to do it. Good. So that was that. Well, why should students, how can students donate and why should they donate? Um, we have many ways that you can donate. You can donate on the St. Baldrick's website. Um, there was a press release on the QU website. It's still up there. They can go there and Quincy University has its own event on the St. Baldrick's website so they can donate directly to our event. They can also select a participant, a Shea V, that they want to donate to um, online. Um, the business office is also accepting donations if you're not comfortable donating online or, or you don't have a credit card and would prefer to do it in cash or check. And also at the bookstore, they're selling um, St. Baldrick's um, mascot is Lucky Charm. And so they're selling Lucky Charm, paper Lucky Charms that they will post with your name on it for any amount of a donation. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Fagan, and also thank you for bringing this event to QU. Thanks. It's sometimes a challenge to have fun events in the dorm all year long. 
but resident directors and advisors are trying to keep things lively while getting you up on your feet. Last Thursday, Willard Dorm had a dance-off night playing Dance Central and Michael Jackson The Experience for the Xbox 360 Connect. People came down to relax and have a fun night during the middle of the week. Austin Hubbard organized the event and says he hopes for similar events in the future. If you would like to see this event come to your dorm, speak with your RD or RA to let them know you are interested. NQUTV is always on the lookout for unique things happening in the dorms. You can let us know by clicking on the Contact Us section of our website. Midterms are approaching and that often means added stress and anxiety for students. QTV's Danielle Dunn has found some fun activities on campus that are sure to make you feel good in this week's segment of A Better You at QU. A Better You at QU has showed you how to work out in your room, save money, and eat right on campus. But how about some activities that will not only help with your health, but also make you feel good? The Health and Fitness Center offers new fit classes, such as Zumba and Tai Chi, at least two times a week, that will get you up and moving. Classes are held in the aerobics room on the second floor, Monday through Friday, every night, and are free to all QU students. Specifically, Zumba is a relatively new exercise program that was introduced to the U.S. in 2001 and has danced its way into gyms across the world. Zumba is an easy-to-follow, Latin-inspired, calorie-burning dance fitness party that has been moving millions of people toward joy and health. Another great thing about Zumba is that it is available for all popular game consoles, so you can hold your own dance party in your dorm. To find a class that will work, work with your schedule and you'll find enjoyable, check out the QU website for a list of classes and times. If you're looking for other activities that will give you that feel-good feeling, volunteer at a soup kitchen or clean up your room. Any little thing to make you feel good and improve your mood and day. Thanks for watching and join us next time for some more tips on a better you at QU. For QU TV, I'm Danielle Dunn. If you are looking for more to do off campus, the Salvation Army Croc Center on 5th and Broadway has opened its doors. The $27 million Croc Center is a community center that includes advanced workout equipment and an aquatic arena. The treadmills and other cardio machines are what make these fitness rooms unique to Quincy with simulation screens that put you on a virtual course. Next to the indoor pool, the game room named The Legend is one of the Croc Center's biggest attractions. This state-of-the-art game room has a lit laptop bar, wireless internet, and all games required motion. The ledge is completely free to the public and you do not need a membership to get into the center. The Croc Center is open Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. QUTV would like to send two of our viewers to the Croc Center for a day free of charge. We have two day passages to give away, so if you haven't already won this semester, just be the first person to post, I want to go to the Croc, on our Facebook page to win one of the passes. We would like to congratulate Brittany Coffey and Phil Chopardit on their Pops Pizza gift certificates. Enjoy! Remember when you were younger and cardboard was a magical tool? It could be a sword and armor one day and a house to live in the next. What happens when cardboard catches up with modern technology? You develop the video in this week's Viral Video of the Week. Who knew cardboard could be used for so many things? This video is called Cardboard Warfare 2 and is made by Punisher. The video came out September 24th and has already had over 1.4 million views. This sequel to Cardboard Warfare, a 3 minute video, was expanded to being a 24 minute short film. 
This video is well done with great visuals along with great sounds and effects. Punisher is a well-known YouTube user. His videos have all reached views of at least over 200,000 and his channel has over 150,000 subscribers. His two biggest videos though are Cardboard Warfare with over 4 million views and now Cardboard Warfare 2. The video deals with World War II as it puts the United States fighting against Nazi Germany. Punisher announced on his Facebook fan page that all his cardboard was bought at Home Depot and he had to make three trips for all the cardboard needed. He also said that Cardboard Warfare and Warfare 2 would soon be released on a combo DVD with some extra scenes though no confirmation has been given. If you have suggestion for viral video of the week, let me know and I will take a look at it. Cardboard may still be the same, but video games have changed drastically over the years. However, many people still prefer playing those classic games. QUTV brings you a blast from the past in this week's Gamer's Insight. Hello fellow gamers, and welcome to another segment of Gamers Insight. This week, Gamers Insight is going retro, with a look back on some of the game systems that started it all and made gaming what it is today. We're looking at some of the older systems such as Atari, Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and of course, the Game Boy Portable Console. Though many of these systems are very old and outdated, they are some of the basic foundations that drove game designers and entertainment companies to develop some of the most sophisticated gaming that we have today. Though many students do have an Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or maybe even the Wii, there are plenty of students who still play these retro systems often for their entertainment. As well, there are many games in which we remember growing up with and playing with, such as Super Mario Bros., Sonic, Pac-Man, Galaga, and of course a personal favorite, Duck Hunt. It has been nearly three decades since video game went public, and it has gone a long way since the early 1970s. From playing Pong on Atari all the way to playing war combat games like Call of Duty on the Xbox. Video games have become more advanced and much more complicated since the basic systems like the Atari came out on back in the 70s. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Join us next time when we take a look at Microsoft Studios' newest release, Gears of War 3. For Kiyu TV, I'm Keenan O'Connor. Much like video games, the movie rental business has changed quite a bit in the past few years. Netflix has become one of the fastest growing companies in the entertainment industry, leading the way in streaming on-demand movies and shipping DVDs straight to your home. It was recently announced that Netflix is splitting its DVD services and online streaming services into two separate entities. QUTV hit the streets to find out what students think about the decision by the film and TV distributor. Really, I don't care that much because I only use the streaming part of Netflix, so the DVD section really doesn't bother me that much. It's really not much of a loss. I thought it was a bad idea. I actually deleted my account because it was just too expensive because that was the main reason I had it. It's because it was cheap to have DVDs and streaming, so it was just kind of pointless after that. Really, it doesn't bother me any, mainly for the fact that I'm a college student and I do everything over the internet. I just assume I have everything at my fingertips. I'd rather have it streaming than have the DVDs mailed to me, so it really doesn't bother me. I think it's a great idea because I love streaming and when I go to Netflix I have to check to see if it's actually going to be streaming or if I have to get the DVD. So knowing that I can go to Netflix and don't have to worry about wondering if it's going to get streamed or if I have to get the DVD, I just know it's going to be there streaming. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's QTV. I'm Hannah Youngquist. And I'm Jeremy Culver. We hope everyone enjoys the fall break. We'll see you back here in two weeks.